Alright everybody, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a little bit of a different video. What I'm going to do today is we're going to run through and have a look at the first month really of what's been going on with the Manchester United Academy. Both the under 18s and under 23s side and we're also going to have a little bit of a look at how the loanees are doing, how the players that have gone out on loan are performing so far this season. So if you do want to see more of these on the channel, maybe once a month or something like that, drop us a like on the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new, and let's get stuck in. So we're going to start off with the under 23s. Now if you remember back to last season, it was a really big disappointment at the under 23s level with us actually slipping out of the top division of the Premier League 2 or the under 23s league, whatever you want to call it. We ended up slipping down to the second division only 12 months after actually winning the league. So that just shows you the the stark contrast in how things had gone last season. Uh, there was also upheaval in the managerial side of things at the under-23s level with Warren Joyce early on last season making the move to take over at Wigan. And United never really replaced Warren Joyce. Nicky Buck came in, but only as a temporary measure because he's overseeing the entire development of the United Academy. So he wasn't really in charge, but thankfully no. We have got a man at the top for the under-23s, and that is Ricky Sabreju, who's come back to Manchester United. He's done that job before under Alex Ferguson, so he's taken over the reins again at the reserve, under-23s, under-21s, whatever they're calling it this year. And it's paid a little bit of dividends, if I'm being honest, because we've started off with a pretty decent bit of form in a league what we should be winning, by all accounts, given the given the calibre of players we've got at that level and the, and the potential of those players, we should be winning that league and certainly, at the very least, getting promoted back into that top division of the Premier League too. Now, as far as the results have gone, we kicked off the season at under-23s level with a 2-2 draw away at Fulham with Angel Gomez and Tahi Chong stepping up from the under-18s. They're obviously going to feature a lot more at the under-23s level this year because they're too old for the under-18s. So they got to their season to a good start. Two po a point away at Fulham, not the end of the world. Uh, then we also got a 3-1 win at home, our first home game of the season at Lee Sports Village against Aston Villa with uh, DJ Buffonge, Angel Gomez getting a penalty and Nissan Burkhart, another player stepping up from that under-18 side. He featured a little bit for the under-23s last time, uh, Nissan Burkhart, but no, obviously, along with Gomez and Tahi Chong are going to be a more prominent figure in this under 23 side we then went to the south coast to face off against southampton where we managed a 1-1 draw where we'd taken the lead and southampton were actually down to 10 men as well but disappointingly we couldn't hold on and they ended up snatching a draw uh, dj buffon's getting our goal from the penalty spot so two in two games for him and then we just finished off the month against stoke city at old trafford in front of a pretty decent crowd, to be fair, against Stoke City, where Angel Gomez's single goal right before his birthday, the day before, has signalled another three points for United. We're up into fourth position in the league so far with the under-23s. And like I say, really, we should be looking at, at the very least, getting automatically promoted. Hopefully, we can end up actually winning the league as well because I think it definitely deserves it. Obviously, one of the main changes so far this season for the under-23s has seen a lot of players pushed up from the under-18 side. Angel Gomez, Tahi Chong, Roshan Williams, Nick, Nissan Burkhart, DJ Buffonge, who did feature quite a bit last season, but he's been joined by a lot of his under-18s uh, compatriots, if you will, this season and also featuring quite prominently so far this season which is excellent to see he's 17 years old jimmy garner now he appeared on the on the tour as well the pre-season tour for the first team and looks a very very comfortable player uh steve stephen housen who uh, is a really good youtuber if you've not already seen his channel i'll put a link in the eye go and check it out uh really good really good youtuber really in depth really knows his stuff He's likened Jimmy Garner a lot to Michael Carrick in the holding midfield role, just mopping up in front of the back four. Really good passing ability, and I've got to say, I completely agree from what I've seen of him so far. Looks very, very, very intelligent player. The only downside is that he's a scouser, but we'll put that, we'll let that slide for now. 
And uh, like I say, if he can continue his form early on, by the end of this season, he could be pushing for to feature, at least in the cup games, for the first team as well, if he carries on. And now on to the under-18 side, who are another side under new management, with Neil Ryan making a step up from the under-16 side to take over at the under-18s level. Obviously, Kieran McKenna, who was in charge last season after leaning them to the league title, has made the step up to the senior side alongside Jose Mourinho and Michael Carrick. But that hasn't prevented the under-18s from kicking off the season in decent form. A uh, really exciting bunch to watch. Uh, we've been really entertained watching them. Uh, started off the season with a 3-3 draw at home against Derby County. Mason Greenwood, who else? Is kicking off this season as he left off last season with a couple of goals. And then also Brandon Williams getting in on the act as well. That was followed up by a really, really impressive 3-1 away win at highly fancied Liverpool side with Mason Greenwood again getting in on the act. Dishan Bernard as well grabbing a goal. And then finally, Jimmy Garner, Scouser against Scousers, popping up and slotting on the penalty to get us a really impressive win away at Liverpool. Then we followed that up with another impressive performance, this time at home to Stoke City, where we really ran away with it. Again, Stoke were pretty poor, but we put them to the sword winning 5-1 in the end. Charlie McCann, one of the new youth intake this season, popping up with a couple of goals on his debut. Impressive debut for him. Obviously, Mason Greenwood gets his goal, as you'd expect. And another goal from another one of the youth intake in Mark Helm as well. And it looked really good up until this week where we've lost our first game of the season. Unfortunately, on Saturday morning, we went to Middlesbrough and we ended up getting beat 3-1. Quigmal, they're getting the consolation goal for United. But that sees us up into fourth position in the under-18s league. We start off really well. Hopefully, the game against Mills was just a little bit of a blip because this side could be really, really exciting to watch throughout the season. Really enjoying it. A couple of the players that have come up in from the youth intake to watch. Charlie McCann obviously got a couple of goals on his debut. We've got Oliver Denham. De uh, defender from Blackpool as well and Mark Helm also grabbed the goal midfielder from Warrington and then obviously the mo probably most high profile name to come into the under 18s is Harvey Neville son of Phil Neville he's not really featured that much for the under 18s yet this season he's a, he's a more of a midfielder or at least has come in as a midfielder so it'd be interesting to see how he develops and now let's have a look at how some of the players that are out on loan have been performing first up we've got Timothy Fosu Mensa who's probably the most high profile loanee at United at the moment he's moved out obviously to Fulham started off the season on the bench in the first game against Crystal Palace but since then has started every single game for Fulham and has been really impressive for the newly promoted side he's been Really steady defensively, a right fullback, and has also got forward really impressively. So hopefully he can continue getting game time for uh, Fulham, and hopefully he can prove what an asset he could be for United next season in that right back spot. As we were probably looking at replacing Antonio Valencia within the next year or two. And another high-profile player that's gone out on loan is Axel Tuanzebe, who's made the step down to the Championship and is out on loan for the season at Aston Villa. He was there last season. They've recalled him back, so they must have been impressed by what he did in his spell last season at Villa. Uh, now, he started a little bit worryingly this season for him. He was on, he played at right-back in their first game, which was which is really not his position. He's much, much better at centre-back. He can do a job at right-back, but it's not his ideal position at all. But thankfully, since that first game, he's been moved inside to the heart of Villa's defence and has got a little bit of a decent partnership with James Chester for Villa as well. And they've done all right. Villa have done okay so far. Obviously, their money troubles have been widely publicised but they're doing pretty well in the championship pretty steady although the last game this this past weekend was not one for two and Zebe to remember got run ragged by veteran striker Billy Sharp as Sheffield United beat Villa comfortably 4-1 but hopefully that doesn't deter Villa from keeping with to and Zebe at centre back and hopefully he can develop because I think there is a top top quality centre back 
in there in two and Zerbin. Hopefully, his time at Villa, his little bit of experience in the Championship can really do him the world of good next season. Hopefully, fingers crossed, at Manchester United. And next up, we've got James Wilson, who's recently made the move up to Aberdeen to spend the season on loan with the SPL side. And it's a big, it's a big move for James Wilson after a couple of seasons where he's really been hampered by injuries. He really needs to get a consistent run of games to try and get back up to the level that he showed promise of getting to throughout his years in the academy at United. Uh, he's only made the one appearance just coming off the bench this past weekend for Aberdeen in their 1-1 uh, draw against the Burnian. Uh, only played 18 minutes, so didn't really feature all that much for the Dons. So hopefully he can continue on and be a hit for Aberdeen because I still maintain he is one of, if not the best, natural finisher I've seen come through Manchester United's academy ranks in a long, long time. And if it wasn't for injuries, he could have been a star for Manchester United. But injuries have hampered his progression and hopefully he can get back on track, whether that's at United or not, starting off up at Aberdeen. Then we've got Dimitri Mitchell, who's rejoined Hearts in the SPL, having spent six months on loan with them last season and been a pretty big hit with the SPL side. So hopefully he can continue doing bits for Hearts. I think it's more a case of putting himself in the shop window and not letting him stagnate in the youth setup at United at the moment, Mitchell, because I think he's too good for the academy but he's not good enough for Manchester United. So I think he needs I think he needs this loan spell, and then I think he's going to be moving, moved on, if I'm being perfectly honest. But he started off okay for Hearts. He played an hour in their game at the weekend where they run out 4-1 winners against St Mirren and uh, was pretty impressive for Hearts after his impressive spell last time. So you never know. This could turn into a permanent deal for Demi Mitchell up in Scotland. And then finally we've got Joel Pereira who's made the move out to Portugal. He was widely tipped that he was going to make the move out and he's joined up with Vitoria Setubal. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Don't shoot me down if it's not. Um, and he started the season on the bench for the Portuguese side a couple of games. Then he's made the number one position in his own. First of all playing against um, Sporting Lisbon where they ended up losing 2-1 but then he also played in their last game this weekend, just gone, where he's helped them to their first league win of the season and his first clean sheet of the season. So hopefully, Joel Pereira can kick on a little bit, develop a little bit more, and then hopefully he comes back to United, at least as backup for David De Gea next season. So that's our little run through of what's been happening at the academy levels at Manchester United over the past month. Uh, like I say, if you would like me to do these more often, once a month, say, let me know in the comment section. Also, drop a like on the video. Let me know who you think is going to be the standout in the academy, who's going to be the player that could force himself into Jose Mourinho's first team plans. We've got the game against Derby County coming up in the Carabao Cup soon. Could any of these players feature? Let me know in the comments section. But as always, if you have enjoyed this, drop a like on the video. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well. And other than that, I will catch you guys next time.